Welcome to this step-by-step -step watercolour tutorial for a Jumping Fox painting. I'm using Arsh 300 pound rough paper, spelled A-R-C-H-E-S, and Windsor & Newton Art Quality Paints. I have started with a wash of yellow at the top, and then a reddish colour, which is a combination of the yellow some red you can choose any red you wish but um alizarin crimson is good or light red now there will be snow on the ground so i've only come down to the horizon the snow will have melted off the trees and at first i'm doing distant trees which will be very faint and fused in wet and wet currently using a number four brush for the large washes at the start of the painting, I was using a mop size brush, say a number 20. So, a combination of the yellow and some blue, maybe Windsor blue would do. You could put some sap green into your yellow as another choice. So, there's lots of variations. Just continue to um, do those background trees. They'll be very fused. There will be more trees in the foreground, which are much more defined, and that will push those initial trees that I'm painting now further back into the landscape. But they're important to show the progression of distance and variety in the painting. Just continue here and there, darkening a little bit, going over wet and wet. Just coming straight down to the horizon. If you would like to support the channel, please drop us a link and comment below, letting us know what you have been painting recently, because we would like to see the ideas of our viewers for future videos. Prints of my work can be ordered from that link, billholcomb.com. Just continue with this. It takes quite a little while, but the paper will stay wet because we did lay down quite um, generous washes to start with. Admittedly, we are working quite fast. It's not fine detail at this stage, it's underpainting. You could um, choose slightly larger brush if you wish. For this stage of the painting and i've chosen a number four to keep as much control as possible but, um, you could also use a small flat brush to do this part of the painting now i am going into a darker version of the grain this is where you can make choices you could add some permanent sap green to your yellow or just even more of the Windsor blue or you could use other blue colors such as French ultramarine etc. Given the general shape of the trees in the distance as I said the snow has melted off them the snow is just going to be on the ground You will see in other tutorials for my channel that I have shown how to paint trees in snow with the snow still on the trees. Please look at those other tutorials as well. I hope you'll find them very helpful and instructional. I must admit, if I had this facility for me to be able to watch such videos when I was starting out, 
paint transparent watercolours over 40 years ago, I would have made much more rapid progress. So these should be very useful for beginners and even intermediate advanced stage. You can see there's a nice little variation the way I'm laying the pigment down with those strokes, not one mass of a certain color, but broken up. And the lighter underpainting is showing through here and there. So that indicates that light is catching the trees at certain angles and so forth. Do remember that um, the pigments always dry much lighter. As you can see now, they are dry and sometimes I use a hair dryer to speed up the process. Occasionally there will be a clip where you can see me doing that. Now I've gone to a much smaller brush. You could go to something like a number two and put in some trees there. So when you put the trees in, remember to space them a little bit of audio and mix them up a bit. Now I've gone to a flat brush and I'm using that to scrape, using the scraping technique for these trees. So a nice medium to dark version of the grain, breaking it up. Once again, um, as is the normal process, we tend to do an underpainting first, so a lighter colour, and then Sometimes when that's still wet, other times when it's dry, we're laying on the darker colour. So we've got a couple of medium height trees, a smaller one in between, another one separated a little bit, so a variation. Now coming into a darker colour, it's still slightly wet the paint at the moment, which is fine, it's fusing in, varying the shape, showing the general direction of the limbs, branches and so forth. Later on, you'll see there'll be even more trees dropped in the distance. The fox will be painted at the very end of the tutorial, so please do remember to see it all the way through. And I have done the fox paint um, in pencil first of all as I did with the rest just light pencil this particular fox is leaping in the air and diving into the snow to catch his prey a bit more interesting than just uh, sitting somewhere staring at us Now I'm just darkening up some of those tree trunks here and there, but showing it broken with the foliage in between. You 
you can still at this stage use something like a number two brush which gives it that fine detail especially at the top of these trays so you can keep control see they're coming together now because we did that underpainting first Now at the base of the trees, we've got some different grasses and bushes and so forth that uh, have changed colour from their normal greenish colour because we're dealing with an um, autumn winter scene. To the right of the painting there will be a large tree and I will be painting a red cardinal sitting on one of the branches in that tree and to make it interesting do little twigs and little parts of bushes with your small brush now I've laid in some various undulations in, in the snow you can do your blue and red colours you can vary them so some are lighter, some are darker. I'm mainly using a flat brush for that. Water size is good. And we will put even more definition in the snow later. We're just doing an underpainting. Little ridges in the snow. As you see, you, you can here and there dab with a tissue if you have a little bit too much pigment, a little bit more than you wanted. Sometimes just immediately dabbing it. Sometimes once it's dry, dipping your brush into some clear water. Not too much, just a little. And then dabbing and lifting. I show that technique in even more detail in some of the other tutorials for instance a canopy of oak trees I think is a very useful tutorial for beginners it's one where you don't have to worry about detail too much for this one with the fox at the moment I'm now doing some more underpainting in the area of land closest to us so I've got a variation of the blues and broken up like that and then I can put even further washes on top as necessary and now with something like a number 10 I'm doing that scraping technique on top of the snow. Now we've got on to painting the fox you can see the little red cardinal up on the little branch there I do a series of different bird paintings as tutorials please check out my library on my channel here and you'll see a number of them if you have a design to paint certain birds so I think it's best to start the fox painting with the head area to get that accurate and in order to make sure I keep control I am using something like a number two brush and even a number one brush here and there you will see as we progress with the fox part of the painting that we can achieve a nice variation in the fur of the fox to make it look as realistic as possible under paintings taking place at first and with the fox there's um, quite a nice or well, that is called red fox there are also quite nice variations in its fur from yellow to orange then to light red and so forth
this, this part on the head is the part where we have to be most careful so we don't go over lines. Keep the desired shape. So don't be afraid to be doing here and there wet in wet like I'm doing. Because your brush is small enough that you can keep control. And as I've just done, if you wish to, you can dab with the tissue to get the right hue that you want to achieve in terms of the amount of pigment that you've laid down. Now we, here and there we can start to darken up certain details. I hope that you'll feel at the end of this one that um, the way we've done the fox is really realistic. It shows a good action. This part of the painting, of course, is, is the most detailed and the most time consuming. But once we've got some um, beyond the stage of painting the head, things will speed up a bit. But we will very much, as always, be doing some underpainting on the body first. And sometimes that will be dry before we lay down some strands of fur. Sometimes it will be wet and we'll be fusing in. So we're at that stage now, as I said, variation in colour. Variation is important because, you know, light is catching the animal's fur here and there at different angles and so forth. That will produce some variations in the hue. You could use um, something like a Windsor yellow or a rim, if you can get hold of that. Then whilst that's wet, you can lay it on the reddish colour. You could use some light red with your yellow. Alizarum crimson would be more intense, so if you use that, you'd have to use it in a very small amount. You don't need much of that one at all. Here and there, there are little bits of fur sticking up from the outline of the body of the fox. I know this part seems to be taking a long time, but it is important. As I said, I think you'll be impressed with uh, how realistic the fur of the fox looks at the end. And then you can apply this technique to fox painting, where the fox is at different angles doing different things. So the same principles would apply. These particular foxes have um, very nice dark coloured paws and legs, which you'll see when we get onto those later, which helps also show a nice contrast. Makes them look a bit cute as well, I think. There we go, drawing in some of effects. Still using a very small brush keeping control. This will dry much lighter before, as needed, we'll be able to darken some later. When we come down to the pores, I'm um, purposefully leaving that much lighter because the Fox has been treading in the snow and it's got some snow on the paws.
So we've done the, the legs. Fox is definitely leaping, jumping. We're putting more definition on the fur, making good use of our underpainting by putting the darker colours on top of the fur. They have this distinctive dark patch just before their town starts of the tower. So these strands of fur can be used all over the body like I've done on the back and the fox continuing down its body. Little bits of fur come in off the underside of the tail, making it more realistic and darkening up here and there as necessary to show definition. Makes it come more to life when you have that contrast of light and dark. Do remember to like and subscribe because if you do, you'll be notified of future videos. You can uh, watch them and um, they're all free. You can watch them even if you don't subscribe, but if you subscribe, it helps us because it pushes us up the viewing table. We're more likely to get airtime. And here we are, finished painting of the fox jumping into the snow, also known as a leaping fox. Hope you've enjoyed that. See you next time.